Here we're looking at learn.microsoft.com with the documentation on OutGridView. Now OutGridView will take tabular data, rows and columns, to display it as a pop-up window. This is very helpful and allows you to sort, filter, and navigate the info. Most script developers, PowerShell admins, are going to use format table, FT, and you'll see pipe FT and a lot of different usage. I actually think that OutGridView is a better option because it gives us a pop-up window that's interactive. It lets you sort, filter, copy, paste to Excel, do a lot of different functions that format table really can't provide. And format table is well known because it's one of the original commands with PowerShell. And it's kind of unfortunate that OutGrid View doesn't get more visibility because I think it's a, a really good alternative for format table. You might adjust which fields you're looking at. You need more visibility than the single console window can provide. If you have a high number of columns, you need to scroll horizontally. Format table covers none of that, but OutGrid View can. So OutGrid View has a couple of different parameters, very simple, input object, title, and weight and it's only available in the Windows platform. So when we start thinking about PowerShell, you know, .NET Core, running it on things beyond Windows, other systems like Linux, you need to know OutGrid View is only available for Windows. Because of that, you get some really cool interaction. Sorting, filtering, copy paste, hide show columns. It almost becomes like an Excel spreadsheet. It does not work on Server Core or Windows Nano Server, not available on those. So let's go ahead and run a couple of examples. We'll start with example number one, get process to out grid view. This gives you a pop-up window of all the running Windows processes. And you can see things about the amount of memory, CPU, the process name, the, yeah, there's K, and it doesn't count megabytes, it counts kilobytes, CPU cycles, a lot of different things. And you can do a search here, maybe sort for Chrome, you know, maybe for Edge, if there's a browser session. And when you type something at the top, it's going to filter your results. You can also reorder your columns by dragging column headings, which is really cool. You can click the column headings to sort, and you can even select everything and do copy paste with Control A. So it, it's almost like an Excel spreadsheet. And for me, that's way more valuable than the simple function of FT, format table, which does kind of the same purpose, but not as interactive, more limited. So that's our first example, just popping an out grid view. You can use a variable to store the results. This is helpful because you may want to filter, reduce, save it, write it to a CSV. So of course, same idea. We save it to a variable and then we pipe the variable to OutGridView. So OutGridView can be part of the pipeline direct, but also can support variables. You can do different sorting and filtering and then bring it into OutGridView. So you can pre-process the information is kind of what we're looking at with example number three. And with something like that, you end up with a more focused set of data that has some sort of filter and sort criteria. So you don't have to do that by hand in OutGrid View. You can do it before handing the data over the pipeline. Uh, here we can do get child item recurse OutGrid View. This is a, a folder definition. So for something like that, you may end up with a lot of different data to explore. It's kind of a high number of different files and it goes recursively. So on something like this, get child item for PS Home, you end up with all these DLLs and XMLs, but you've got your last write time, the size of the file, and the recurse will go all the way down the folder structure. That's pretty cool. Uh, get process for a remote server. This one essentially is using OGV as the alias, which is the short name for OutGrid View. So if you're in a hurry or you like acronyms and just want to type OGV, that definitely works well too. Here you can invoke a command on a remote machine. Now, I don't have remote machines S1, 2, and 3, but this does exactly the same functionality as we would locally. It collects the data remote, but then it will display local. So that's the thing to remember here is that it comes back as a local display. 
Um, in this example, the outgrid view is piped as a pass-through. Now, this one's very interesting to me, the pass-through, because it lets you write it to a CSV, but also explore and see the data interactively. So if we go ahead and execute that example, we are going to see our outgrid view. Okay, very cool. And then when we go look at our directory structure, we end up with a file named process log. Yeah, we do end up with a file named process log, and that comes through as a pass through command. So back to the documentation, kind of talking about that, save the output to a variable and then output to a window. That's fine. We can do that. So here we end up with variable A and the pop-up window, both. This is for a remote computer. We talked about that. A remote, multiple remote computers with the invoke command. All right, that's fine. Uh, and I, I kind of like example six even better because of script block. This could be anything. You could put an entire function in here. I mean, the flexibility of invoke command, you could run an enormous function to go collect data on a remote host. Pass multiple items, get process, out grid view, and then export CSV. Yes, yes, they, you get two outputs with this. Sends multiple items down the pipeline. So pass through is the interesting part here because it allows us to write to a CSV and also see it as outgrid view in a pop-up window. Um, and then finally, if you wanted to make a window shortcut, and this actually goes for anything PowerShell, so this really isn't too specific to outgrid view, but you do the PowerShell PWSH to go ahead and instantiate a new session, new run space, execute the command, and the wait parameter will be helpful for making a shortcut. A uh, command line can be used in a shortcut. Without the wait parameter, it would exit as soon as the window opened and it would close immediately. We don't really want that. So for something like this, we'll take a look and go ahead and run an example. So from example number eight, we can go ahead and make a new shortcut and put in our command line and we'll name it OGV. And when we double click to run the shortcut, you see the OGV window and there it is. There's our out grid view wait. And the dash wait is important because it keeps PowerShell alive while the window's open so it does not close immediately. And yeah, maybe you want this for some sort of quick visualization. You you double click, right? And then maybe you end up with a health report of some of your servers. Maybe this is like a server remote function and you wanted to put in one of the invoke script block commands we showed earlier. So definitely a cool idea to know about the wait function because the wait is what allows us to make a shortcut. Dash wait is gonna be the essential piece here. So those are the examples from Microsoft Learn. Gives you a better idea of out grid view and I'd say give it a try. The next time you wanna do pipe FT for format table, try using pipe OGV. I think you'll like it. Thanks for watching.